Hello everyone. Today we will learn how to build a computer vision interface from scratch using Streamlit in Python. We will start up by writing code for object detection with YOLONAS and then we will write a code for Streamlit interface with Python and then combine it with YOLONAS for object detection in real time. There we will create three pages in our Streamlit app. The first page which will be the about me page will tell us little bit about the web app and the author. The second page will allow us to do object detection on images. The third page will allow us to do object detection on a video in real time. So before we go ahead, let me tell you about Streamlit. Streamlit turns data scripts into shareable web apps in minutes all in Python all for free, no front end experience required. So Streamlit is a way of getting professional looking web app or dashboards in which you can interact with your computer vision applications. So let's get started. So now you can see over here, I have created an empty folder by the name Yolonas Streamlit course for this project. So now in the next step, I will open PyCharm and create a new project over there. So I will just open PyCharm. Let me open PyCharm. So here you can see that I have opened the PyCharm. So I will just click on file and click on new project from here and just select uh, like create a new project from here and select the location from here. And inside this, I have just created a folder by the name Yodona Streamlit course. So I will just select this uh, as my directory over here. So you can see that this is the empty folder. So I've just created this folder. So I will just click on OK. So you can see over here this location and this location matches. And my base interpreter is being set as Python 3.10. So that's look OK as well. And then I will just click on create and just create a new project. OK. And in this window, so now it's preparing the workspace. It's creating a virtual environment. So this might take few seconds before it is ready. So now you can see over here, it's creating a virtual environment and you can see over here, uh, we have created up a new project and this is a folder name appear, appearing over here and here you can see the directory path over here as well. And it's updating the interpreter path, so it's not ready. And you can see over here, uh, we have created a new uh, project into our PyCharm community edition. So before we go ahead and write code, uh, let me just create a, a new file by the name requirements.txt. In the requirements.txt file, I will list all the required libraries that are required and that are required in this project. So I will just click on file and just write requirements.txt. So I've just created a requirements.txt file. In the requirements.txt file, I will list all the required libraries that are required for this project. So as we want to do object detection using YOLONAS. To do object detection using YOLONAS, we require the super gradients package. So I will just write super dash gradients and the version is 3.1.0. So to do object detection using YOLONAS, I told you that we require super gradients package. Plus we also require the OpenCV Python package. So we, why we require OpenCV Python package? If we just want to read an image or read an input video or display the output video or display the output image or to do uh, pre-processing on the image or create a rectangle or the bounding boxes around the detected objects in the image or in the video. Plus, uh, if we just want to resize our frame, in this way we can uh, use multiple functionalities that OpenCV Python provides. Okay, so I will just uh, install the OpenCV Python package as well. And we will want to just install the latest version of OpenCV Python. So I will just not, uh, not write the version name over here. So it will definitely install the latest version of OpenCV Python. So I will just uh, go to a terminal now and just write over here pip install minus r requirements dot txt. So if we just write pip install minus r requirements dot txt. This will install all the required libraries that you have written 
or mentioned in the requirements.txt file. So I will just write pip install minus r requirements.txt and click on enter now. So now this might take few seconds or few minutes to get the packages installed, but you can see over here it's appearing requirements uh, already satisfied because I've already installed these packages. So you can see over here requirements already satisfied because these packages are already previously installed when I was just working on this uh, script. So if you haven't uh, installed these packages uh, before, so this will take around five to 10 minutes to in install the super gradients and open CV Python package. So now you can see over here, our packages are already installed and the requirements appearing satisfied. Uh, next, what we will do is uh, I will just go over here and create a new file or dot py file by the name object detection dot pipe. So here I will first uh, write a code how to do object detection on a video using YOLO NAS. So I will just write down a code over here how we can do object detection on videos using YOLO NAS. Uh, why I just uh, you can just uh, rename it as further as well. Uh, let me just rename it. Okay, uh, we don't need it. Uh, let's go ahead. So now in, over here, I will be doing object detection on videos using yellow NAS. So in the first step, I will be importing all the required libraries over here. So I will write import CV2. And the other library which I require is uh, so CV2 uh, is the OpenCV Python package which I'm importing over here from super dash gradients raw training import models. So we have imported the two libraries. So this is uh, we are just uh, importing models from the super gradients package. Uh, why we require super gradients package because we are doing object detection using Golanas and we are importing CV2 as uh, CV2 is OpenCV Python package. Uh, so OpenCV Python package uh, provide different functions using OpenCV Python package. We can display the input image, output image, input video, output video. We can resize the frame. We can uh, create bounding boxes around the detected object. We can uh, draw trails as well. We can just uh, track each of the detected objects. So there are multiple functions that uh, OpenCV provides and using these functions uh, makes our life very easy. And I will just write import torch and for the confidence score to calculate the confidence score i require the math package so we uh, we have imported all the required libraries over here next what i will do is uh, as we want to do object detection on a video so first of all i will just create a directory over here by the name video and in this directory let me add some uh, example videos on which we will doing object detection or we will testing our model on these videos and we will see whether we are able to do object detection on these videos or not so now you can see over here in the video directory i have added multiple videos which you can see over here so I have added multiple videos into our video directory and let me just uh, go back towards the code. So now if I just refresh it from here. So now you can see over here in the video directory, you can see that we have added multiple videos which you can see over here. So let's continue writing the code. So first of all, let's read a video. App is equal to cv2 dot video capture and here i will just add the path of the video so i just need to go to the video folder and write bikes.mp4 okay i just want to uh, read capture this video or read this video frame by frame then i will just uh, calculate the frame width and frame height because i want to save the output video so i will write And now I will just calculate the frame height. I will write in cap dot get four. 
So now here you can see that we have calculated the frame width and frame height. Now I will write device device is equal to torch dot device. Yoda zero. If tosh dot Yoda dot is available. So if we have GPU available, if you have GPU in your system available, it will be using GPU. But as I don't have GPU available in my CPU system, so it will be using CPU. So if you have GPU available in your system, it will use GPU. But in any case, if you don't have GPU available, it will use CPU. So uh, to do object detection, I will be using Yolana's pre-trained weights. So let's import or add the pre-trained weights of the Yolana's model. I will write model is equal to model start get. And over here, I will write Yolana small. So for object detection, I will be using Yolana small model. And the pre-trained weights as Poco. So I will just initialize count because we just need to do the frame count. So as we are doing object detection on videos, uh, later on we will also see how we can do object detection on images as well. So as we are doing object detection on videos, so uh, what we require is, uh, and we are using uh, Yolana's pre-trained model and the pre-trained model uh, is being trained on Coco dataset. Yolana's uh, pre-trained model is being trained on the Coco dataset. So the Coco dataset consists of 80 different classes. So I will just add the class names over here of the Coco data set. So I will write class names and I have just copied those class names. So I will just paste these class names over here. So just give me a minute. Let me add those class names over here. So now here you can see I have just added those class names. So let me just remove this. So these are so as we have trained the Yolana's has been pre-trained on Coco dataset. Coco dataset consists of 80 different classes, and here I've just added those class names. Plus Yolana's comes with three different models: Yolana small, Yolana medium, Yolana large. Yolana small is the most fast, but it is less accurate among other Yolana's models, while Yolana's large is the most accurate, but it is less fast as compared to other Yolana's models. So uh, we, I, as I'm just testing uh, this on CPU, so I will be using a Yolana small model. I can compromise on accuracy a bit, but Yolana small is fast as compared to other Yolana's models, while Yolana's large is the most accurate, but it is less fast. So I will be using Yolana small model because it is the fastest and I can compromise on accuracy because I don't have the GPU available, I'm using CPU. Oh, as I just want to save my output video as well. So I will write CV2 dot video writer. And my output video will be saved by the name output dot AVI. And I will write over here CV2 dot video writer dash or CC M J P G and the frame rate will be 10 and here I will just write the frame weight and the frame height okay so if you just go ahead now so uh, my output video will be saved by the name output dot avi and here I've just defined the frame weight and frame height over here Now I will write while true red comma frame is equal to cap dot read 
and what I will write here if red then what we will do over here result is equal to list model dot predict and further I will write over here frame and here I will also write so we just want uh, so all the objects which all the detected objects which have a confidence value above 35 percent we will have bounding boxes around them so here we have defined the confidence as 35 0.35 so it means all the object uh, detected objects which have a confidence above 35 percent uh, will uh, have bounding boxes around them so um, confidence means how much confidence value means how much our model is sure that there is something or uh, like there is a car there is a truck or there is a bus so now from the result i will get the bounding box coordinates So here you can see that we have obtained the bounder bounding box coordinate for each of the bounding box we have four values uh, or we have for each of the bounding box we have four coordinates values x1 y1 x2 y2 x1 y1 represents the top left corner coordinate and x2 y2 represent the bottom right corner coordinates so for each of the bounding box we have four values x1 y1 represent the top left corner uh, coordinates and x2 y2 represent the bottom right corner coordinates okay Uh, let me just show you as well let me just open paint and i can just show you over here so i'm just open. let me just navigate my screen towards the paint so now you can see over here for example this is the bounding box around the directed object so for each of the bounding box we get four values uh, we get the x1 y1 coordinate value we get the x2 y2 coordinate so for each of the bonding box we have four values we have the x1 y1 coordinates we have the x2 y2 coordinates okay from results we will also obtain the confidence values and i will write result dot prediction dot confidence And we will also get the class name for each of the object as well. So now you can see that from this result, we have got the bounding box coordinates. We have the confidence values of each of the bounding box or each of the detected object. We have the confidence value. We have the uh, class name like whether we have directed the truck, whether we have done directed the car or something else. So now uh, I will just loop through these confidence values, labels values, and uh, coordinates values, uh, and see. Uh, and just we will just create bounding boxes around each of the directed object uh, using CV2 dot rectangle function. So here you can see that we are just converting our bounding box coordinates values into an array. And here I will write x1, y1, x2, y2. And here what I will write. So we will just separate the x1, y1, x2, y2 coordinate values. Over here. 
So I'm just separating the app x1, y1, x2, y2 coordinate values from here. And I will just convert. So currently here we get the output in the form of tensors. Uh, now we are just converting the output from tensors into integers. So to convert the output from tensors into integer, I will just write over here. And we have the class name as Now we will also calculate the confidence score over here. So to calculate the confidence score, I will write, right? Confidence is equal to math.seal. And here I will write. So now here you can see that we have calculated the confidence score over here. So now from here we can see that we have the class names like whether it's a truck bus we have the confidence value for each of the bounding box we have the bounding box coordinates for each of the bounding box in the current frame of the video. Uh, plus I will also print the frame count over here so I will just write print. And here I will write frame n and here I will just write the frame count over here. So let's look pretty good till now. Okay, I think there is an error over here. So that's fixed. So now we will just calculate a text size because with the help of this text size, we will create a rectangle above the bounding box where we'll just put the label and the confidence code. So to calculate a text size, I will use a cb2.get text size function. As you just want to display confidence score and the class name above the bounding box, so I will just write over here label is equal to. So we will just display in the label, we will display the class name and the confidence score above the bounding boxes, each of the bounding box above each of the bounding box. So now we will just uh, uh, calculate the uh, rectangle size which will uh, create above the bounding box. So we will be just creating a rectangle above the bounding box where we will just putting the label. Uh, in the label we will we have the class name and the confidence code. So now we will be creating a rectangle around each of the detected object using cv2.rectangle function. And the color of the rectangle will be 0, 55. So this will be the color of the rectangle. 
uh, this will be blue color. The rectangle of the bounding box which we will create around detected object will be blue. Uh, just uh, replace it with square brackets. Three over here. So the thickness of the bounding box uh, or the rectangle which we will create around the detected object will be three. So now above the bound bounding box, uh, we will just create another rectangle in which we will put the label. The label will have the confidence score and the uh, class name. So here I will just write over here x1, y1, c2 over here. And the rectangle which we will create above the bounding box will have the color. So this will and the rectangle will be filled. Okay, so so now we will just put the text inside this rectangle. So I will just add frame over here. And here I will just add for the thickness. I think we just need to define the thickness as well. Okay, so the text color will be uh, white. So this defines the white color. And further our thickness will be. The thickness of the text will be 1 and the line type will be cb2 dot line dash double. Okay, so that's look pretty good now. So I will also add the resize frame as well. So if the frame size is large, we can just fit into our screen. So for this, I will just use cv2 dot resize function. And we have the interpolation defined as cv2 dot inter dash area. So here we have defined the interpolation over here as well. So here I will just save the output video. And to show the output video when we just run this script, so I will write cv2 dot I am sure frame nice frame and here I will write cv2 dot weight e1 and 0x is equal to Then we'll break it and else we will write so there's all and then I will just write out dot release cv2 dot destroy all windows. So that's all the code. So now uh, here uh, I've just written all the code to do object detection on images. Uh, plus you can also do object detection on a like webcam feed as well. And uh, if you just modify this code a bit, you can also do object detection on images as well. Uh, we will also see how we can do object detection on images. So let me just run this script and see what results do we get.
so now let's see whether we are able to do object detection on the image on the video or not uh, we are just using this spike.mp4 video to do object detection on the video and let's see how does it goes uh, if there is any error we will try to fix it up uh, but currently we are just checking if it works fine or not so if you just uh, replace the cv2.video capture function with zero uh, you will be able to do object detection or using live webcam feed as well so by just replacing the cv2.video capture function and the video capture function if i just replace this with zero uh, we can do object detection on the live webcam feed as well okay so it's about to start and let's okay so here we should have result is equal to list so this is my mistake so i just need to add over here result is equal to list and let's execute it again and see how does it goes so here is the output video so now you can see that we are able to do object detection on videos using yola nas like you can see over here we are able to detect the traffic light over here or uh, as well and you can see that here we are able to detect the person uh, we also have the label person we have the bounding box around detected object we have the confidence score of the person as 0.96 this means uh, the model is 96 percent sure that this is the person and here you can see that we have detected the bicycle and we have the confidence score as 0.62 this means the model is 62 percent sure that this is the uh, bicycle and here you can see that we have detected the handbag and the confidence score is 0.37 so this means the model is 37 percent sure that this is the uh, handbag so now you can see over here we are able to do object detection on videos using yola nas and the detection results results also are also looking fine we have created bounding boxes around each of the detected object we have added a label as well as the confidence score over here as well so now you can see over here we have uh, done object detection on the videos so now in the next step what we will do we will just go towards the streamlit part now and see how we can create a streamlit app and integrate our object detection model into our streamlit app Before we go ahead and create a streamlit app to do object detection on images and videos, uh, let's uh, see uh, how we can do object detection on images as well. Because in the streamlit, streamlit app, we will be incorporating object detection on images and videos. So let's first do object detection on images. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have seen that how we can do object detection on videos using yellow NAS. So first of all, I'll I will just click over here and just write object detection dash image dot pi. So I will be doing object detection on images using Yola NAS. So whatever code I have written, I will just copy it over here and just add this code over code over here. I will just make few changes. I instead of videos, I will write image is equal to cv2 dot I am read and for this I will just create an image directory over here okay now this should be in a file this should be an image directory so I will just create an image directory over here so now I will just go and add some images into this image directory so let me just uh, go back a bit and let me just add some images into this image directory so that uh, we will be able to do object detection on images using yola nas so uh, let me just navigate my screen towards the folder and let's add some images into the image directory okay so here you can see that we have the folder image directory or we have the directory image so now i will just add some images over here okay So now in the image directory you can see that i have added five images i will be doing object detection on these sample images uh, so let me just go back towards the code just give me a minute
sorry so this was the wrong directory which i was showing so this is the image directory which you can see over here we have created so in the image directory you can see that i have added these five images so i will be doing object detection on these images so you can see that i have just created a directory by the name uh, image over here and in this image directory i will just i have added these five images so i will be doing object detection on these sample images okay so we are back into the code so if i just uh, see this is the image directory and here you can see we have five images so let me just re uh, go to the image folder and add the path of the first image image dot jpg over here and let me just comment this out or remove this all this okay also i just want to remove this uh, frame count because we are not doing frame count over here uh remove this as well uh, just remove the while loop over here as well so just remove all this from here as well okay so the code looks fine and what i will do is uh, just copy this from here and just write image over here and next what I will do everything looks cool just remove this from here and 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 it just write image over here image over here image over here as well image over remove this okay Just add CV two dot V E one and CV two dot destroy all windows. So I think the code is ready and let's run it. So if there is any issue, we will try to fix it up. Uh, all the case, I think uh, we will be able to do object detection on images. So just add zero and write python object detection image dot by so now i will be doing object detection on images and let's see what results do we get okay i think the spelling mistake is over here so if i just go down and just click over here just click over here control c so now i will write python so now let's see whether we are able to do object detection on images or not so this might take few seconds If there is any error, we will fix it up. Okay, so there will be an error because here we should have image. Okay, I think this is wrong. Uh, this will be the error. Uh, as everything looks fine, uh, let me just see. Okay, so that's look fine. So we just need to run again because there was an error okay so let's run it again and let's see uh, whether we are able to do object detection on images uh we might require the resize function over here as well so i will slide resize that frame okay I will just copy this resize function from here and uh, just add this resize function over here and here we will have image okay and in the resize frame I will just add resize image okay so that's look good as well
so so let me just see uh, so here is our output let me just show you so now you can see the output in on the screen uh, you can see that uh, the output is not able to fit on the screen it's very large so i will be using resize function resize function of opencv python so that this output can fit into our screen so i will just write 0 0.4 or 0 0.4 over here and everything looks fine let's see how it goes so just execute the script again and let's see the output So here is the output image. You can see that we are able to do object detection on the images. We have created bounding boxes around the detected object. We have the label person and the confidence score over here as well. Uh, let's choose some other image and let's see uh, what results do we get. So just copy, click over here and click on refractor, click on rename, copy this name and just add this name over here uh, that's look fine and just go down and make it 0 0.88 and let's execute it so now we will see uh, what results do we get whether we are able to do object detection on these images basically this image uh, contain images of cars and trucks and traffic lights so let's see whether we are able to detect the cars, traffic lights or not. So this might take few seconds to execute uh, before we have the output ready. So let's see how does uh, it goes. Okay, so this might take few more seconds. Uh, okay, so So here you can see the output image you can see over here we are able to detect the cars traffic lights a truck over here as well okay so if we just uh, change the confidence score currently we have set the confidence score 0 0.35 which means uh, all the detections which have a confidence above 35 percent will have bounding boxes around them so if we just lessen the confidence score and make confidence score around 0 0.20 or 20 percent then we will uh, we will be able to detect more objects or rest of the objects so here you can see the detections look, results look fine so now let's move towards the streamlit part for now we have seen that how we can do object detection on images on or and on videos so let's move towards the streamlit part so now we will be creating a streamlit app our Streamlit app will have three pages. The first page will be About Me page. In the About Me page, we'll have uh, some information about the app, uh, what our app will, uh, what different functions our we can perform through this Streamlit app. Plus, it will also contain information about the author. Uh, the second page uh, will be the uh, the name of the second page will be Run on Image. But what we will do in this second page, uh, using uh, in the second page, we will be doing object detection on the images and then we will have the third page in which we will be doing object detection on videos so our streamlit app will have three pages the first page is the about me page which will contain the information about the app and the author the sec in the second page will be the run on image page in the second page we will be doing object detection on the images and the third page will be run on videos in on in the third page we will be doing object detection uh, using Yolonas on videos uh, using a live webcam feed or as well so let's get started so first of all I will just uh, create the about me page so first of all we just need to create a .py file so we will be creating a streamlit app and it's all the code will be, will be run all in python no front end experience required it's all free so let's get started I will just create a .py file by the name streamlit-application.py. Okay, 
so now as we are uh, creating a streamlit app so we just need to uh, import the package streamlit as well but before we import the package streamlit we need to have this package installed so i will just write streamlit over here and uh, i will just uh, so now you can see that i've just written streamlit and i will just write over here pip install minus r requirements or txt so i'm just now installing the streamlit package so this package will take some time to get installed but it will not okay so if pip install minus r so that is my mistake okay so now we are just installing the streamlit package over here and i'm just installing the requirements in the first step so I have already installed the streamlit package but if you are just installing for the first time this will take some time so so now you can see that uh, streamlit package is also installed we have already installed the super gradients open cv python package and here you can see that requirements already installed satisfied because i have already installed the streamlit package so just close this so now i will over here write as import streamlit as st okay so that's look fine so in the next step i will just create a function by the name main over here and first of all i will just write the title of my uh, streamlit app like this title will appear object detection using YOLONAS or I can write object detection with YOLONAS okay so this is the title of our streamlit tab and here I will write if dash dash name is equal to and then I will just write over here So now I will just run this streamlit app and see. Uh, I will just write over here. Okay, so this is wrong. I just need to run. I have just uh, run this requirements by mistake. Okay, so I will to run this streamlit app. I will just write streamlit run, and here I will just write the name of the dot py file, which is streamlit dash application dot by so now you can see over here i'm just running this streamlit app over here okay so this might take few seconds and then we will see what output do we get so let me just navigate my stream towards this uh app So now you can see over here, um, we have created an initial web app and you can see the title over here, object detection with YOLONAS. So now you can see that how much simple it is. Uh, it's so much simple, like you can see over here, I've just written st.title object detection with YOLONAS and a web app is, is created using Streamlit and we have the title displayed over here, object detection with YOLONAS. Uh, now in the next step, we will also create a sidebar over here Uh, so to create a sidebar i will just write side st dot sidebar dot title so the title name of the sidebar will be settings uh, like we have different functionalities in the sidebar like if you want to use webcam you can set the confidence value or you can select the specific classes you can upload the images in using sidebar you can upload a video so we have different we will have different functionalities in the sidebar and this is the title of the sidebar and the subheading or the subtitle of the sidebar will be so this will be subheader 
and here I will just write the sub um, header will be parameters. Okay, or the subtitle will be parameters. Now I will just add a markdown over here as well. And here I will just write and I will just define style. And here I will just write data test ID over here. And now here I will just define the width of the sidebar over here. Just copy this from here and just press enter. I will also define the margin left over here as well. And here I will just write unsafe.allow-html is equal to true. So let's see how does it works. So I will just go back and I will just refresh the page. So here I am. I will just refresh this page and see whether we are able to create a sidebar. Okay, so now you can see that. Uh, we don't have the options over here. I think there might be an error. So let me just go back to code. Okay, so let me just check it out if there is any error so I can just fix it up. Everything looks good to me. Uh, just stop this and let's read on this and see how does it goes. So I will just run this Streamlit app again and let's see Streamlit run Streamlit dash application dot py. So now let's see whether we are able to create the sidebar and in the sidebar we will have the settings as our main title and the subheader will be uh, parameters. So let's see. Uh, let me just navigate my screen towards the. So now you can see over here it's working fine. We have the sidebar over here. We have the heading as settings and we have the parameters option over here as well. And here is the uh, title over of our streamlit app like object detection with YOLO NAS. So that's look quite awesome. So let's go back towards the code and let's add some other functions over here as well. So as I told you, basically we our streamlit app will have three pages about me page, object detection on images page, object detection on videos page. So let's go add this page options over here in the sidebar we will add the page options like user can go to the about me page user can go to the run on image page run on videos page
so here i will just add like over here we have about the app page the about the app page we have the information about the author as well as about the app and this is our third page which you can see over here run on video so let's see uh, whether we are able to add these uh, three pages into our streamlet app or not so let me just refresh this app you can see the button rerun over here as well so you can also use it so now you can see that here we have the option you choose the app mode uh, we have the three pages listed over here about app run on image and run on video so if you just click on it over here nothing happens because uh, we we don't we haven't added any functionalities to these pages so let's go back and let's add some code over here so let's first design the out about app page okay so first of all we will design this about app page so i will just write if app dash board is equal to about app Here I will write in this project, I am using YOLONAS to do object detection on images and then videos. And we are using using Streamlit to create a graphical user interface, which you can say GUI. So now you can see that uh, in this project, I'm using Yolanas to do object detection on images and videos, and we are using to Streamlit to create a graphical user interface. So that's the good. And then I will also add again all this stuff over here. So let's see whether we have these two options available now. Let's me refresh this or rerun this again and let's see how does it works so now you can see over here uh, in this project i'm using yolanas to do object detection on images and videos and we are using streamlit to create a graphical user interface uh, there is a slight mistake over here and let me just fix it i'll just go back towards the code okay so now you can see over here i am back to the code and let me just update this up from here and i will just also add over here and let's uh just rerun it or just refresh it again and see So I'm just, I will just refresh the app again. Okay, Yolonas is appearing. This is a small mistake, what I am doing. Okay, so. And now it will work fine. I just refresh it again. So now you can see over here. And so now I will just go to my YouTube channel and just uh, take a video from here.
and just add this display that video from uh, there okay so um, or let's display this video so just copy the url of this video or just write over here yolo grass let's see so just copy the link of this video okay and then just go to the code again and now here i will just write st dot video as i just want to display this video on my web page so i will just add the url of the video and i'll just add a markdown and here i will just write about me and slash n so it will just jump to the next line It's Muhammad Moin a computer vision. And if you just want to add a link, you can just add the link over here as well. So I will just navigate back. So I will just copy the link from here. And just add the link over here. And let me just run this app and see what, uh, how does it looks like now. So just refresh this now. Uh, so now you can see that uh, we have displayed a video into our app. And you can see that here is about me. It's Mohammed Moin, a computer vision enthusiast. Please check out my YouTube channel. And here, if you just click on my this link, you will be redirected towards my YouTube channel. Okay, so that's look fine. Okay, so here you can also add your LinkedIn profile, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram profile links as well. So now you can see over here, we have designed the first page about app page. Uh, if I just click on run on image, you can see that uh, nothing happens or nothing is visible over here. If I just click on run on videos, nothing is visible. If I just click on about app here, you can see that we have just completed this page and we have uh, uh, introduction in this project i'm using ulanas to do object detection and on images and videos and we are using stream rate to create graphical user interface and you can see over here if i just go down and here you can see okay so this is the mistake this is not correct okay so that's my mistake here it should be this one so let's refresh it and see how does it goes. Okay, so that's fine now. So now uh, next what we will do is uh, we will just create a page uh, to do object detection on images. And then in the last we will see how we can do object detection on videos or in the live webcam feed. So let's first uh, 
create a page to do option detection on images. So now we have completed the about app page. So now we will just uh, complete our page to do object detection on images. Uh, so now here we just need to add confidence value slider, upload an image where user can upload an image and do the object detection on that image. And we will just display the output image over here as well. So uh, this, uh, first of all, uh, let's go towards the code and let me tell you how we will do this. So here we are just back to the code and you can see over here. First of all, I will just go over here and create a new file by the name of check detection image video stream dot by. Okay. So I will now just go over here and just copy all this code and just add this code over here and nothing. So now I will just create a function over here. So how I will do is I will just create a function by the name define load YOLO NAS process each image. And the parameters will be image, confidence, and the other parameters will include uh, what other parameters we can add is uh, we can add the KPIs or not. So we don't need KPIs over here. We will just require the KPIs when we will do object detection on video. So just add ST for the stream date. Okay, so you can just write over here, import stream layer at SD as well. So that's no cool. And just comment this out. And uh, just uh, comment this as well. Okay. Or you can simply remove these things and put all this inside the function. So let me just put all these values inside the function and just copy the confidence from here. And uh, just add this confidence over here. So that's no good. And here we will add some header. Take enter. So that's look good as well. Mm -hmm. So we have just completed this function and nothing, nothing modification requires all good. So now I will just go to the streamlit application.py page and uh, I will just complete the code for the uh, page we will create up to do object detection on the images. I will write elif is equal to app dot mode is equal to run on image 
uh, please make sure that this name over here and this name over here matches as it will create an error. So the user will input the confidence value. We will just create a slider to input the confidence value. So now I'm just creating the slider so that user can input the confidence value. I will just copy this code from here and add this code over here. So now I will just create an option so that user can upload the file. And here I will just uh, pass an input image so that that image will be displayed. In any case, uh, if, then we just open the object detection and image page so that image will be displayed. Here I will write. So that's the word. I have just written all the code over here. And in the sidebar, I will just display the original image and in the window, uh, in the main window, we will have the output image over here.
okay i'll just go over there so now i will be just calling this function i will write from okay. i will be importing the function from this file and the function name is So that's all look good and let's see if there anything missing we will add so everything looks fine so now let's refresh our streamlit app and let's see how does it works so here are we our streamlit app so now let's refresh this app and let's see whether we are able to do object detection on images or not uh, if there is any error we will try to fix it up so this might take few more seconds before it's ready to execute it so i will just go to the run on image page okay name image is not defined okay so now but we have the conference slider and upload an image option over here but we have a name image okay so i haven't forgot to import the libraries so i will just add the libraries So now I will just refresh this page. So this is our original image which we have displayed and uh, now what is that? Uh, okay. Let me just check this error. I just found out the mistake here it should be image so I just need to write this over here and let me just go back and refresh the app and see how does it work if there is any error or it works fine so let's see whether we are able to do object detection on image or not so let's run on image again click okay and let's see whether we are able to do object detection on images okay so that's impressive you can see over here uh, we are able to do object detection on images but you can see that uh, we have multiple bounding boxes around some objects but if we just increase the confidence score the results will improve so you can just adjust the confidence score from here as well plus uh, you can see the results have improved uh, now you can also click on browse file and uh, let me just go to the folder and i let me just upload few more images and see how does it works okay let me just add this upload this image and let's see whether we are able to do object detection okay so now you can see that we are able to track cars but uh let me just make this confidence value a bit lower so now you can see that we are able to track traffic lights all the cars so the results look impressive so from here you can adjust the confidence score as per your choice from here you can just vary the confidence score and from here you can just upload any image okay so let me just upload this these two persons images and let's see how detection results look like so now you can see that we are able to track both these persons as well so now uh, we have till now we have done object detection on images as well uh, plus also we have seen that how we can design an about 
app page so we have created two pages about app and run on image in the run on image we have seen that how we can do object detection on images so in the next part we will design our last page which is run on video in which we will doing object detection on videos as well as on the live webcam feed as well so now we have seen that how we can do object detection on images now we will see that how we can do object detection on videos as well as on the live webcam feed or we can say that how we can create a streamlit app on which we can do object detection on videos and on the live webcam feed as well so i will go back towards the code and over here So now you can see that I'm back at the code. So first of all, I will just uh, go to this over here. And now what I will do in the first step is uh, I will just uh, go over here and just copy all this code from till now. So I will just copy all this code from here. and i will just click over here and i will just create a function by the name define yolo nas process each frame and here in the input i will write I will define three KPIs over here. So now you can see that I have defined three KPIs and one ST frame over here. So you can see. Now I will just add all the code. And here I will just write video name over here. And that's look pretty good now. Now I will just go down over here and just update the code. Uh, we don't, we can just keep the frame count. In the image. Here I will define the channels. Now I will also calculate the FPS of the video like how many uh, frame rate like FPS stand for frame per second uh, like how many frames are being processed in a second. So if you are using GPU this the detection will be fast but if you are using CPU that will be pretty uh, slow. So FPS means frame per second so it means how many frames are being processed in one second. So to get rid of FPS, we need to import the time library. I will write over here. Here I will define previous time as zero. So 
So now I will just write down the three KPIs over here, which I have defined earlier above. So here I am just defining the three KPIs over here. So that's look fine till now. So this will uh, this will become a bit irritating. Let me just add this. So I will just add this code. I've already written the code. So because it's becoming a quite irritating. So I will just copy this and we will also add the width and height. So now we are just kept it in a bit and hide. I will just write over here. And here I will just update KPI 3 and here I will just add width uh, here I will just add the width over here and here I will add the height so that's look pretty good So that's all done. Uh, we have just created this function. So now we will just go to streamlit application.py and just complete the code over here. Here I will write alif app dash mode is equal to run on video. Uh, please make sure that this name matches over here. So just copy this from here and just paste this over here and click on enter and we just need to add this markdown again Uh, we will also add the webcam option like user can use the webcam as well
and here I will just add the markdown over in the sidebar again as well. Now I will just up create a buffer so that user can upload the video file. So following types of the videos, the following uh, type it will accept. So we just need to import a temp file over here as well. I will just write over here import temp file. Now I will just go back over here. So if the user click on the use uh, webcam checkbox, then we will set this value to zero. Else, else uh, we will use the art demo video which we have um, art already uploaded over there. So we will display this text of input video. So that's look pretty good. Uh, what is left? Let me just see if I, I think there are a few things still left. Let us just complete those. So there are a few things still left. Uh, let me just write those and then we are good to go. So we need to define the three KPIs and just call the function which we have written already.
So I'm just creating a markdown over here as well. You can see. Now we will define the three KPIs over here again. So using these three KPIs, I'm just creating three columns over here. So just copy this and write it for the other three you as well. So I will just go over here now and I will just copy this from here and paste this over here and here I will just write Just updating the name of the three KPIs, they shouldn't be same. So that's so good. Uh, I think that is all. Let me just see. So I think the, that's all uh, we need to do to do object detection on video or to create a streamlit app to do object detection on a video. So let's go towards it and refresh it and see if there is any error. We will try to fix it up. So just refresh our app from here or you can just click on rerun from here and just go to run on audio okay so uh, there is an error let me just fix it up so it shouldn't be equals to let's go back over here there again and see if it works fine I think there are multiple mistakes regarding this. So here we have a mistake. Now let's go back and refresh it again and see uh, if the error is fixed or there is still an error. Okay, we have the error in the KPI. Uh, so they are small errors uh, usually happens when you are just dealing with a live recording <laughs> so 
for their capital. So hopefully it will work fine. Uh, let, me, let me just see if it uh, okay or if there is any error. So let me just check it. Okay, let me rerun it. Uh, hopefully it will work fine now. But if there is any error, uh, I will definitely try to fix it. So I'm just running it again and seeing if it works fine or if there is any error. So let's run on video. Okay, think there are error. Let me just check it again. Okay. So now you can see that it works fine, but uh, KPI one dash text is not defined. So you can see that we are able to do object detection on video you can see over here so it is working fine but i think there is an error we need to fix this error so let us go back and try to fix this error first so this was the error and this was there. I hope it will work fine now. Let's go and refresh it. So I'm starting it again and let's see if it is fixed or if there is still an error, but hopefully it will work fine. Let's see. So I just restarted it again. Okay. KPI one desk text is not defined. Let me just check this out. So this was the error, I think KPA one dash text was, I've not defined that. So I've just defined it by just, it was, one was missing. So I just added one. So let me just rerun it and see uh, if it works fine or if there is any error. So if it is fine, then good. But if there is any error, we will try to fix it up. So this might take a few seconds, okay. So now you can see over here, we are able to do object detection on this video. So this was by default uploaded here, the frame rate is 0 0.4 because I am using CPU, I'm not using GPU. And this is my frame width and frame height, which you can see over here. And you can see over here, we are able to do object detection on the video. I'm just using CPU, so the speed is very slow. And uh, if I just click on over here and uh, go to video, and let me just upload some video. Let me just, oh, I've uploaded the same video. Let me just upload some other video. Uh, let me just video. So let's see if we are able to do object detection on this video or not. So now you can see that we are able to do object detection on this video as well. And you can see we have the frame rate over here. We have the uh, frame width and frame height over here as well. and if you just click on use dash webcam, uh, you can do object detection on the live webcam feed as well. So let me just click on use dash webcam. I think uh, I have not ad added this function correctly. Let me just check. Looks okay, so let me just uh, go there and just refresh it again and see if we are able to do object detection on the live webcam feed or not. So now I will just like to use dash webcam option and let's see how does it goes. So now you can see that we are able to do, to do the detection on the live webcam feed as well. And we are also able to do detection on the video as well. Uh, plus you can also upload any video over here and do the detection on this video. 
So that's all from this video tutorial. I hope you have learned something from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.